Oh my goodness, the cat just came in. Hello. I didn't know you could open doors. <laughs> Um, my name is Nicole. If you're new here, welcome. If you are not new here, welcome back. Thank you for sticking it out with me. It has been a couple of months, I think, since I put up an episode and I have lots and lots to share with you. So let's get into it. <laughs> First of all, I think you'll notice I'm in a slightly different location, but I think the lighting is still good. I'm looking at my little viewfinder over here. So forgive me if I'm not directly focused on you. Also forgive me for any background noise. Hoping to be able to edit that out, but I am, as I said, in a different location. I'm in Cardiff for the holidays, um, visiting Connor's family who live in Cardiff. So yeah, I've picked this as my little setup um, and I think it looks very nice. Uh, I'm finishing off my cup of regular tea because we have a surprise what's in my cup. Uh, that has been organised by Connor. So not even I know what's in the cup. I've been ordered to open it on camera. So we'll figure out together what that is. But yeah, I have everything with me. I have everything set up. So let's get into it. So Connor has instructed I open this or unveil this on camera. I'm not sure what it is. Okay, here we go. Let's see it together. Oh! That's why it smells fruity. It smells juicy. Oh! I don't know what that is. It's got sweets in it. It's tasty. I think it might just be juice with like fizzy water. What is it, you ask? Oh! <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what this is. Come on then. This is unplanned. Go on, tell. It's got sweets oh, in it. Oh, the sweets fell to the bottom. One was, they, one they was on top. I tried to beautifully on top. One was on top that I tried to grab, but I can get it. What mm. is it? Um, it is, uh, I think has made an appearance previously on the podcast, the Northern Monk Guava. Oh! Um, it doesn't taste like it. With some lemon cordial. Lime, isn't it? Lemon. Lemon cordial mm -hmm. in my guava. What is it? A hazy yeah. pale ale, maybe? Yeah. Well, delicious. Five o'clock somewhere. For sure. Well, See ya. thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Connor. Yeah, yummy. Okay. That's what's in my cup. Because I'm not filming this at home, I'm not able to show you the pottery that I have been making. I was very excited to show you guys like some cups I've been making. Um, in the what's in my cup section, I had it all planned out, but for many different reasons, I haven't been able to film in a very long time. So, that's what's in my cup. And with that, we're gonna hop right into finished objects or what I'm wearing. As you can see, how much can you see? I'll take some pictures. I am wearing my finished Ingrid sweater. I'm incredibly happy with the fit. So yeah, the Ingrid Sweater has made many appearances in different forms on the podcast. This is the woman's Ingrid Sweater with the eyelets, um, knit in Worthmill, Wooly Knit, DK in the colour Lupin. Um, in terms of, I mean, I just knit it to pattern, I didn't really change anything, aside from in the underarm crosses, yes, in the underarm cross section, instead of doing the crosses across this little bit here like you're supposed to because it turns out like a little bit janky. On both sleeves I've created sort of like throwaway stitches so here the throwaway stitches are just in stockinette that just decrease away if that makes sense and then I have the crosses on either side. On this side this was the sleeve, oh wait no, this is stockinette. <laughs> This is stocking it. On this side, on this side, I tried to do like a bit of a ribbed pattern. This was the first sleeve I did. So I did ribbed throwaway stitches that get decreased away. Um, and I don't like it as much as 
the stockinette side that just looks so much neater. I've worn this a lot, so you can see I've got a little bit of a little bit of pilling happening, but like it's a very rustic sweater overall, so I'm very happy with it. I love the fit, I love the way it looks. I did Italian, Italian tubular bind offs on the sleeves and on the bottom of the body. Um, the collar, I did knit to full, full length and this collar I've put elastic in. I've put elastic in at three different points, one kind of here, one midway and then one at the end and I'm kind of in the process of deciding which elastic I want to keep in. I do like without the elastic this is kind of quite baggy and doesn't look very nice on me up like this or maybe I just didn't block it correctly. Uh, I wasn't quite happy with the way that it looked. So I put elastic in here at the top. Uh, this section here in the middle was kind of <laughs> puffing out and it made me look like I had some kind of like thick neck down here. It wasn't great. So I put elastic in here and I put elastic in here. There's there's an excess of elastic in here. Um, but yeah, I did it like this. I do like it standing up like this, but I find that more often I wear it folded kind of in half like that. And then with the elastic here and here, I'm liking the way that that looks. But yeah, that's my, that's what I'm wearing and my first finished object. I think it looks beautiful. I'm really happy with it. I'm really glad I made another Ingrid sweater. So this matches Connors and I think we're planning to wear them on Christmas. They're going to be our non-Christmas themed Christmas sweaters. Um, so that's my first well, that's what I'm wearing. My second finished object, which I might have Connor model, because it doesn't look very good on me with this hairstyle, which, yes, I did bleach my hair. Yes, it did coincide with exam period. <laughs> and yes, it was a box dye, well, box bleach. Um, but I think it looks, I think it looks pretty good. But I might not be able to wear my muscle bra hat. Um, this is finished. This has also made many appearances. Um, this has been knit, frogged, re-knit. Um, because the first time I made it, it was absolutely huge. This time, let's see if it works. It looks fine, but this isn't the hairstyle that I'd wear a... This isn't a hairstyle I'd wear a beanie with. Yeah, this is a re-knit. Very happy with it. This is super cozy. This is Drops Flora, um, which I think is a four ply yarn. Um, I think I'm gonna have to have all the specs on screen for this because I don't really have them in my notes, um, as in like from crown to crown, how long it is. I'll have maybe I'll put a video a picture right here of Connor modeling it. Um but yeah. If you've seen any episodes of the podcast, you will probably have seen the muscle bar hat before. I love it. I have worn it a few times. I really love that it's double, double thick. And I love the alpaca. It's super soft and really, really cozy. And then you have it kind of like doubled over again on itself, um, which covers my ears very nicely. Um, and I've been wearing a lot of that. So I've been wearing a lot of my muscle bar hat, wearing a lot of my... Ingrid sweater throughout the winter. So that's my second finished object. Oh, just for a bit more information, um, let me see. So I started my muscle bra hat apparently on the 20th of July and I finished it on November the 2nd. So that was quite a long time knitting, such a small accessory, but that does include the time spent frogging and re-knitting it. So, I don't think I'm a particularly fast knitter as well. So things take however long they take to knit. But for my Ingrid sweater, um, I started, off, started this on the 1st of September and then I uh, finished this on the 17th of November. So this somehow took me less time than my muscle bra hat, but of course, I mean, I felt I was prioritizing knits. I really wanted this finished well before Christmas and it is. And um, the muscle bra hat, I kind of more exclusively knit this in the cinemas. So yeah, that's just how that, that's just how that turned out. That takes me on to 
my third finished object. Okay, so my third finished object is of course, let's see if I can get this on camera nicely. Not really, but um, if you are into knitting podcasters, I'm sure you've seen this before. This is my Sophie scarf. Um, this is a petite knit pattern. Ingrid sweater is petite knit as well. Hat, you sold a teak. Um, this is my Sophie scarf. Um, this is a gift knit. I have only two gift knits. I didn't want to tax myself too much and it's technically not a Christmas gift. It is a birthday present. I'm trying to be quiet because I'm not I can't remember who's in the house right now. Um, but yeah, this is a this is a gift knit. Um, I knit two things because this is a bit of a bit of a set. Um, but yeah, this is knit. This is the larger, I'm pretty sure, of the two Sophie scarves. So when you buy the pattern, you get two sizes available to you. This is the larger size. It is knit in Wendy, I think it's called Wendy DK with wool um, yarn in the color ink. So it's a wool acrylic blend, um, which means it is fairly soft, fairly comfortable, but also machine washable. Um, I don't want to gift something that is taxing to take care of to somebody who, like I don't want to gift people problems, <laughs> basically. And I feel if somebody's not a knitter, gifting them something that they have, the upkeep is, you know, more than it might be worth is not ideal. So yeah, this is just yarn I bought at Hobbycraft because I was on a bit of a time crunch. Only took me maybe a week to make. So I started this, I started this on, November, not even a week, I don't know. It took, I started this on November the 20th and finished it on at November the 22nd. So it took me literally a couple days to finish and I was just knitting on this. Um, pretty monogamously, the, oh, let's see, focus, can I, let's see if I can get you to focus on this, here, yeah, so you can kind, you can kind of see it's like a mostly navy blue yarn with, um, some like pink, pink stuff, don't know what material that is, but blue and pink yarn so yeah looks looks inky and um, I think it's very cute it's very stretchy and I love it I think the person who I have knit this for is gonna love it very French and this was part of a set bringing me on to my I think fourth finished object which is not very well blocked I guess so this is the Couture Beret um, I think Sari Nordland pattern it's knit in the same yarn. It's a very French birthday present, but um, the person I'm gifting it to, I think is going to love it. It's very them, very their style. Um, so we have a Sophie scarf and Couture Beret combo here. Um, I have yet to weave in this end here and I have yet to weave in uh, a couple ends, a couple ends on the scarf but that will be not a problem at all. I had a lot of fun knitting this lace pattern. It took me, took me maybe, I, I mean, I started this right after I started my, I uh, finished my Sophie scarf. I must have finished this within maybe a week, but I was also doing exams at the same time. So, I mean, this took me, this would have taken me much less time if this was the only thing I had going on. Um, but yeah, this was a really fun lace pattern to knit in the same yarn. Let's see if we can get a close up here. which I think is just beautiful. There's probably mistakes, but I'm gifting it, like I said, to a non-knitter, so they won't notice. I can't really see any mistakes, um, but that's because I can't really read lace knitting yet. So um, I probably, I mean, knitting it in such a dark yarn probably wouldn't be ideal, but I definitely think for like a first, if somebody was trying to get into lace knitting, this would be a great first uh, object to knit. And I think I'll get either Connor or my gift recipient to 
model this as well. Oh, doesn't look too bad. Yeah, again, maybe not ideal with this hairstyle, but yeah, very cute, very, isn't this adorable? Ooh, I might make myself, I don't think I was a beret gal, but I might make myself something like this, yeah. So very cute, I will try to have, I've, we've got, this, this is, today's the 21st, so I've got a few more days till Christmas. So if I have time, I'll maybe take some really nice photos and put them up. Um, but I'm trying to get this out before Christmas, so um, it might be minimal, minimal editing on this video. But yes, these are, I don't know if these count as the same. So I think this is my third and fourth F FO, finished object. Um, also, the repeat is like, maybe something like eight stitches. It's like an eight stitch repeat, maybe. Um, it wasn't until I was reading Ravelry notes, like after, well after I'd finished it, that somebody who had also knit in fairly in dark yarn, maybe even black yarn, had a comment in their Ravelry notes that was like, stitch markers will be your friend. <laughs> I did not even consider that I could use stitch markers, so I was I was definitely struggling a bit. But yes, use stitch markers; it will make everything so so much easier. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was it was doable. Um, I didn't really have any issues with it. Again, we've got an I cord edge here. I I mean, as you can tell, I had a lot of fun doing some I cord edging here, and it kind of matches here. I considered putting elastic in the uh, in this band here. Ultimately I ended up not doing so um, because it's fairly stretchy but I don't know what, what do you guys think. I might, I, I brought some elastic with me so I can definitely put it in um, while I'm finishing off weaving the ends. But it doesn't really seem like I'll need it. I don't know if acrylic and a, an acrylic wool blend will stretch out a lot. Um, I'm not sure about that but we shall see. That is all of my finished objects, kind of. I have one more finished object that I'm kind of considering a, I'm, I'm, I'm considering a whip. I'm considering a work in progress still because I do have a lot of like finishing touches to do on it still. It feels like a whole, a whole project in and of itself to, to tie all these ends in. But let me show you. Put on. I've been making a lot of accessories, I feel. These are very cute. Let's have a look-see. So, I mean, I don't know, what do, you, what do you think? Do you guys count, do you guys still count it as a finished object if you haven't woven in your ends yet? Or is it only finished once your ends are woven in? I think I have been classing things as finished even if my ends aren't moving in, um, because I feel like, I feel okay about starting a new project <coughs> before completely finishing a project. Well, I guess finishing, yeah, it's not finished. What do you guys think? But I'm, I'm classing these as a whip. Weaving in all these ends is just, is so much work that I don't feel comfortable calling this finished. But anyway, these are, my pioneer gloves. Oh my goodness. Isn't that so pretty here? Let's get in. Let's check out this yarn. I think it's focusing on my face. Wow, look at that. So some of you might recognize this yarn, but I wouldn't I wouldn't put it, you know, I wouldn't I wouldn't hold you to it if you didn't recognize it. This is the yarn that I purchased some time ago from eBay. It was a bag of kind of random scraps um, that I think were, I think are merino. While I've been working with it, I think it's merino wool and nylon because it seems like fairly sturdy. It feels sturdier than other uh, pure wool that I've used. Um, so this was, yeah, just a bag of scraps that I organized into uh, color order and I've made some 
Pioneer gloves out of it. I can't remember who wrote that pattern. These initially started out as Lane socks. Um, I'll put a link to the part that pattern as well. Um, but as I was knitting the socks, which were also going to be in uh, colour order, I was looking at the yarn and I was like, this is so pretty. I almost feel like this is too pretty to you to, to just have as socks. I won't ever be able to see it. So I started knitting the lane socks. Maybe I got about that much length of lane socks and I thought, hang on, let me try to convert these into gloves or mittens. Um, I started doing that and then I realized I had more, like a lot more stitches than other mitten patterns would have. I think my socks are like 62, 64 stitches and these gloves are maybe something something more in the realm of like 50 stitches or something like that or at least the mitten patterns that I could see were a lot less stitches and it wasn't really panning up the way that I wanted to I also had no idea I was gonna free kind of like freehand it I wasn't I had no idea how to split for a thumb at all so I don't know why I thought oh it'll be easy I'll just I'll just do it it'll be fine so I found a pattern the pioneer gloves pattern is free uh, and of course you can knit it in different sizes you can keep you can so you start at is this the bottom i don't know you start over here you knit upwards of course you can make this much longer down here you can make this i think the in the original patterns or in the original in the samples the gloves are more about this length but you can knit it as long as you want it's very customizable I've, i saw people knit it all the way up to the end or like past their fingers and then have it folded down so that this hand part is double thick which I thought was really smart um there's people who have modified the pattern so that there's like individual little fingers um very smart I don't really want to do that um but yeah this is how it's turned out and I'm so happy with them it means I get to you know I so I knit these with the intention of having these be my little knitting in winter gloves because I get really cold fingers which is ironic because I've left my fingers out but um, these keep my hands in general pretty cozy um so these were these are knitting gloves and again I was knitting these while I was studying for exams so these are also my typing gloves and uh yeah I just have a billion ends to weave in I've started on this side so you can see I've tucked I've gotten rid of all these ends that are down here, which not that much to be fair. So the end here is just a little bit of, I can never remember if it's stockinette stitch or gar garter stitch. And this is garter stitch, so that it rolls up a bit at the end, that is a feature. And then you can see it's a lovely ribbed pattern, which I think is so beautiful. And the lines of the, can you see it? I don't know, the lines of the rib pattern kind of flow up the thumb really, really nicely. So I think, yeah, this is a really great free mitten pattern. I finished off the fingers up here. Um, I finished off the fingers with, you guessed it, an I-cord edging. Again, on the thumb, we've got an I-cord edging. I've <laughs> I learned that, I learned that, oh, not edging, like bind off, I guess. Yeah, this is edging and this is an I-cord bind off, as are these. Um, yeah, I learnt that bind off and I've been kind of obsessed with it for accessories ever since. But yeah, I think it looks great. And that is, yeah, so I'm classing this as a whip. That's my first work in progress. I only have two whips. I'm back down to two whips. I felt like in the lead up to Christmas, I've had a lot of works in progress. And I've mentioned before, I'm not the biggest fan of having more than two works in progress. I just get really overwhelmed and I feel really sad knitting on one thing and thinking, oh, I would much rather knit on another thing. Um, so I don't anticipate on Christmases, I'll be doing a lot of gift. Maybe that makes me selfish, I don't know. I do have another whip that is not with me. I didn't bring it because I'm not super excited about it, purely because of the colours that I chose. 
I'm also not going to put a picture of it in here because I don't have it with me and like I said I want to get this video out before Christmas um but it is my autumn doodle cowl um which is a oh let's see Jamie Jamie something pattern I think I talked about it last episode so I'm not going to talk about it too much um, but yeah, I'm not I'm not super into the colours that I chose. I'm loving the pattern, I'm loving the customizability of the pattern, but yeah, it's just, it's not panning out. But my last whip, which I have kind of just started, and I think I'm going to restart it. Oh, isn't this colour so pretty? This is my Whitmer cardigan, which is an Amy Loudon pattern. I've talked about this a few times, I've talked about starting this a few times. Um, it honestly it fell off my needles and I don't really know how to read lace, lace um, knitting like I mentioned earlier so I'm just going to restart this or maybe I'll take it back to like this collar section. So this is the yoke. Let's see if I can... Yeah. So I might take it back to just up here at this collar section um, and pop it back onto needles. But yeah, this is my Whitmer cardigan. Um, I love this colour. I had bought um, Needle and Fred, I think Big BFL yarn, which I had intended to use for my for this cardigan. But having just finished the uh, Ingrid sweater in purple, I wasn't super keen on having another purple cardigan. I've, I've mentioned it in episodes before. I've got a purple cardigan, not knit, but I just, I want something different so I'm going to do something else with the big BFL that I purchased but this is knit and what I think is a really beautiful combo oh please ignore this because it looks a little bit messy but here we have a woolly knit um four ply cone in the color mallard which if I get this on camera I think just looks so stunning and strapped to it because I've already frogged this a little bit which I'll discuss in a second um I am pairing it with Rowan Kid Silk yeah Rowan Kid Silk Haze in the colour Agen which truly like match made in heaven yeah a match made in heaven this is so beautiful it's like this beautiful greeny sort of turquoisey blue that is absolutely stunning I'm really gonna love this as a cardigan so I'd already frogged this and started again because this was maybe my second time um, knitting something in lace um, I had made a couple mistakes but I was just kind of pushing through with it um, and then I saw Amy of Knee Knits or N-E Knits her podcast discussing her um, Whitmer cardigan and she was having all these issues with sizing and the size of the yoke and da 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 and so I ultimately ended up frogging it and knitting a smaller size um, I can't remember the maths right now but essentially I was kind of maybe in between sizes kind of trying to choose between two sizes and I want a smaller yoke than I'd intended to knit so and then I had like a friend in the hospital, I had taken this with me to knit and kind of wait with them and I had like forgotten my pattern or I didn't have my phone so I was making a bunch of, I was kind of going on memory of how, of how it was, a bunch of mistakes. So I started again, I'm not great at, at lace knitting, I can definitely say that. I had a lot easier time with beret. I don't think it's that the patterns are all that differently written. Um, I was just very like preoccupied with other things and making a lot of mistakes. It's going to be re restarted. Of course, oh, I forgot to mention, I finished these in the car on the way to Cardiff. We drove down from Dundee to Cardiff and yeah, I had a lot of fun knitting in the car. So this is my, my car knit. And I think that the cardigan, the Whitmore cardigan is going to be my car knit on the way back. Yeah, I'm really, really loving how that's turning out. Like, I'm really, I'm so, so excited to have that as a finished object. Which makes that my 
second knit, uh, whip that I brought with me. Technically my third, but we're not talking about the autumn doodle cowl right now. I th I'm thinking I'm going to frog it, to be honest, because the colour choices I think are for a different project. I don't think they're for an autumn doodle cowl. They're not very, they're not particularly autumn, autumnal, but I'll discuss that when I'm home and when I'm with the project and I can show it to you. So that is all of my whips, which means I'm going to end on with acquisitions. Um, usually I don't have all that many acquisitions. Oh, well, actually, I guess I really only mean filming when I've been doing a lot of knitting or when I have a lot to update on. So I kind of have, do have a lot of acquisitions usually. Um, the big acquisition that I'm very excited to share is, it's kind of, okay, so I got it at the Scottish Yarn Festival, but of course I've been opening it over December because it's an advent calendar. Uh, it's the advent calendar that I purchased from Ammo Yarns. You probably still can't get it. By the time this video is out, it's, it's gonna be so close to Christmas, it's not, we're not buying advent calendars. I haven't really seen of anyone else um, or I haven't seen of other people buying an Ammo Yarn advent calendar. So I'm going to show you what I have so far and I don't think this is going to be spoilers, but, but yeah, by the time I get this up, it's not going to be spoilers. I'm very happy to share. Um, I have it all in a bag because I really wanted to bring it down to Cardiff with me. First of all, I'm going to show you just a kind of like random handful. So this is like 21 days worth of advent calendar and of course it was organized really really nicely which is now not in my packing but here is a little taste of some of the yarns that I've been getting Ooh, they're so pretty so bright and vibrant honestly I've talked before about how I really, really love vibrant, like really saturated, juicy yarns. This color is just so lush, this beautiful fuchsia. Ooh. Um, I've talked before about how I really like vibrant yarns and Ammo Yarns is just everything. And yeah, I do have plans for this. I am. I think gonna have three whips with me on this Cardiff trip. This I believe is merino wool and nylon. I'm not sure of the composition. I think I'm gonna make myself some beautiful socks from this. So I think I want to have them. How do people show a bunch of mini skeins? How do you, <laughs> how are we setting this up? Maybe like this. So I want it to be a beautiful pink and purple striped sock. That'll be pink in there. And then have these very bright bluey tealy greens as my accent colours. One of which I want to be the toe, toe and cuff, and one of which will be the heel. And these for either stripes or, I mean, this is a perfect opportunity for colour work socks. So I haven't totally decided on the pattern. If I go stripes, I'll probably just do a vanilla sock. Um, but this might be a good opportunity for me to try out my colour work. Um, I think if you guys have patterns in mind, if you are seeing these colours or any of the colours really, and you're thinking this would be a great da 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 sock, feel free to let me know. I've got some plastic, I've got it all kind of, I've got it all in a Ziploc bag. So excuse the rustling. This is what we're working with here. Ooh, I am so excited to get into that, but I definitely, I think I'm going to force myself to finish my lane socks before digging into a new bag of yarn because that's what a responsible person would do. So I'm pretty sure that's all the knitting that I want to talk about, which means if you only watch this podcast for knitting content, I release thee, you are free to go. Um, but as a little, a little chit chat, um, I want to talk about a little bit about where I've been. So um, I think 
I think you guys know I went to Belfast uh, with Connor, which was a lot of fun. Um, I then did also have COVID, <laughs> which sucked. Uh, as I don't, you know, nobody's having a great time when they have COVID. But I was pretty laid out by it. So yeah, that sucked. I, uh, Connor, I did refer to him as a friend earlier, which, oops. Um, I wasn't sure if I wanted to talk about it, but Connor was in the hospital, not with anything super urgent um, or serious. He was only there for a day. It was pretty stressful. That's where I kept messing up my knitting. He's totally fine. As you saw earlier, that's what he was up to. Um, that happened. I had a few dissertation deadlines. If you're interested, it's going fairly well. I'm on track, um, but it is reasonably stressful. <laughs> um, and then I've, I've been studying for exams a lot. I was studying in the library for a, the large chunk of it and kind of knitting related. I was very much utilizing my knitwear because it was freezing in the library, which not ideal. But yeah, studying for my exams and then doing my exams, which was reasonably stressful as well. So there was not much knitting or videoing or editing going on. I was just not in the mood for that. Um, and then I've been doing a couple of things like pottery classes and I, oh, I forgot to bring it with me. I've been doing a little embroidery, which you're not going to see. I don't have it to take any pictures, um, but it's very cute. I'll show you it next time. And that's pretty much, it's pretty much it. I've just been busy and stressed and dyeing my hair. So that's what I've been preoccupied with uni, really. Um, this is my last year of university. So things are stressful, but I dyed my hair, so that mitigates, mitigates a good amount of stress. Um, but yeah, I think that is it for this podcast episode, a fairly, fairly brief one. Um, I had a lot to talk about, but I wanted it to be fairly succinct. S s ooh, ooh. Sustain, sus fairly succinct. That wasn't succinct. Um, and yeah, just so I can get something out, keep chatting with you guys. Um, I had a few questions throughout the podcast, one of which is about when you guys class an object as finished. I feel like there's potential for a bit of a rivalry there between finished when it's off the needles and finished when it is completely woven in and there is no more work to do on it. But I mean, that could take forever because I mean, I'm still up until this point putting finishing edges on my Ingrid sweater. And I wouldn't feel very accomplished if that's, if I classed it as finished right at the, right at the end. Is anything ever truly finished? Because I mean, I guess you might need to darn socks. Like, okay, when is an object finished? And I guess I wonder like how you guys get on with reading lace work. Um, I think I am not <laughs> doing great with reading lace. Um, I suspect that will all come with time. I get, I haven't been knitting for that long. There's, you know, people in my comments who've been reading, yeah, sorry, knitting, who've been knitting for 10, 20, 30 years. Are you a pro at reading lace knitting? because I am not. But yeah, um, chat to me. Chat to me in the comments. I love to read your comments. I haven't, been, I haven't replied to a lot of comments from my previous video, um, but I'm seeing all of the comments and I'm loving them. Like and subscribe, blah, 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 blah. Thank you, thank you so much for watching if you've made it this far. Um, if you haven't made it this far, I still thank you for watching, but you won't receive my thanks because you, you didn't make it this far. If you made it this far, you're a real one, I'll say that. If you waited this long <laughs> for me to post another video, I really, really appreciate that. I really appreciate you guys bearing with me. Things go through, people go through much more stressful things than exams, but I was really focused on that. So I, I very much appreciate if you have stuck it out with me for this long. Um, that's all I have to say. Thank you so much for watching. I have been Nicole. This has been This Thread of Gold Knitting Podcast. 
Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas when it comes. Bye! Elvis, hello!